Hello, this is Starshot here to welcome you to my Let's Play of Castle in the Darkness. We last left off um, taking on the final boss of the torture chamber and uh, picking up a cabin key and then running all the way back outside to just end up remembering that there's a page we forgot here in the in the uh, cavern or in the chamber. And so now we have to come all the way back and try to get it again. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Uh, it's really kind of annoying sometimes when you do forget that kind of thing you were there for or you wanted to pick up, but you kind of put off for later. But, oh well, it just means we can enjoy more of this awesome music for the torture chamber, right? Totally reminds you of a, like a metal band, you know, headbanging to rock out to, right? And this wall wheel is really fast. Like, that was close. And we are almost there. Gosh, darn it. I'm pretty sure I didn't hit the jump button that hard. But yeah, you definitely have to just lightly tap it, but I'm too used to trying to uh, jump as high as I can here. That's usually what you need to do. But yeah, so I guess last time I was talking about my experience with, with hard games, like never played through Ninja Gaiden or um, the NES Ninja Turtles. Oh, that was close. But yeah, the, um, you know, I have at least played through, um, like, you may not think Super Mario Bros. 3 is maybe too hard, but, uh, it, it definitely was a challenge for me in World 8. Gosh, darn it, I keep jumping too high. That's my only problem right now. And somehow I was able to get it, like, on the second try, I think. But I keep going through this same area over and over again just to get killed by, um, you know, more death spikes. But at least after this area here, we hopefully won't have to worry as much about death spikes. Like, because this area has a ridiculous amount of death spikes. Right, darn it. Wasn't quite far enough in before I double jumped there. But, let's see, and then what else did I play that I would consider to be the, a hard game? Like, I played Demon Souls, like the original. Like, before the Dark Souls, I first played Demon Souls on my PS3, which I enjoyed. Like, I was surprised how much fun I was having with it, even though I heard the game was hard. And, like, the game itself was hard, but it was still satisfying. And, um, like, even though they did have a lot of kind of unfair traps here and there that would kill you because you didn't know they were there. But I think it's fine to kind of have things like that, if, at least if that's how your game's set up, to play. But I should probably try and focus more on actually getting through here so you can, we can finally move on. So... There we go. Finally. Because, like, that jump there shouldn't be that hard. But I kept, you know, hitting myself into it and not making it, so... Now I just have to get out of here, which last time was challenging. Which is kind of why we skipped it instead of trying to keep doing it again, because... I felt like I had enough times dying here. Gosh, darn it. I ran right into that blade there. And of course I keep having to go through this section over and over again. Of course, repetition you know, it's pretty good practice. And getting your skills and it even improving them sometimes, but 
I feel sometimes when it comes to uh, ob certain obstacles, you kind of learn how to deal with them. And if you do get enough practice, you can probably start speed running. But I would recommend you try not speed running just only by playing this game once, because you'll need a lot more practice if you want to get through this game without dying, because that's probably part of the requirement for speed running usually is dying sets you back and puts more time than you or you just keep losing time and redoing stuff. Like I'm not sure what the speed record is, but I'm sure there are some players out there who are good enough to actually get through this entire area without dying. But for me, I like to kind of go through areas and take my time and only really, and not practice enough times that I, I eventually get sick of the game. I want to have fun memories of it, not detest it for all the practice or time I put into it sometimes. No, oh, that was close. So we're finally back here again. We were able to at least do that once more as I carefully try to jump that. But we finally got another lost page. And so now we just need to find our way back. <sighs> Darn it. Like, I really should stop double jumping there because I had enough uh, jump from the first one. But I'm used to double jumping, you know, to get to that spot. Instead of just one jump. But now, of course, I have to learn how to do it the other way. Which, sadly, isn't as easy. I, I think that's one of the few advantages to maybe one other game or another. Like, I guess Demon Souls. You kind of learned the first time, and then it wasn't maybe that much harder to deal with it sometimes. Whereas this one is very pixel perfect sometimes. Or you have to be just right, or that, you know, it, some ways, or, okay, so actually being up to this wall here doesn't get me in the path, so, oh, so I should kind of remember that for next time. And at least I am getting better at doing that now. So this is, I guess, the fourth time I've picked up this page now. So let's see if we can get through here. Darn it, I, I thought I was about to hit the spikes, <laughs> but I, barely I didn't, and instead I died from the saw blade. Uh, I keep forgetting that, or I keep thinking I wasn't going to make it with my initial jump there. like. But apparently they, they designed it well enough that you should be able to without... If I jump the right way, but yeah. Like, getting to this part, I haven't had any trouble with now, but... Just getting out now, that's causing me headaches. But yeah, my, like, so I played through Demon Souls and beat it. Probably not 100% it, but that game I don't think you can 100% because it keeps going to New Game Plus. Uh, and t technically you can just keep kind of playing for a long time, which is fine, but let's see. Let me just focus here for a second. Phew. That was close, but finally made it. Finally got out. Now I just need to make sure. And I'll just wait for this guy, because I don't want to die from him, that's for sure. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Damn. I would have been really, really angry if that had hit. But we finally got our lost page. After all the hard work getting here, and uh, now we can try to live, leave again, and finally move on with the game. Like, it's kind of funny to see 
uh, going through this area again that really it is a lot easier leaving than it is uh, uh, getting in. Which you wouldn't think would be the idea of a torture chamber in general, actually. Or I guess that's more of a prison than a torture chamber, but... I would think it's sort of similar in some ways. But this shouldn't take me too much longer, and I guess after this section here, there was an area in the Cave of Serpents where we couldn't really continue without the ability to swim. So that's kind of what we'll be doing next. There should be some more goodies and bosses to fight in there as well. Oh, that was close. We're definitely having quite a few close calls here, but this is one of one of the hardest areas you'll find. Like, I think if you if you can get through this area here, then the rest of the game should be a little bit easier. And I guess, I'm not sure how many games I can say that, where getting through an optional area, or a certain area, would actually be the hardest area to go through sometimes. But now we have to kind of go through this, uh, dark labyrinth again. I can make sure that there's nothing that secret that we couldn't try to find or pick up or something. But I guess as far as I remember, there wasn't really much here we could find. You just kind of have to be careful in one or two rooms, and then the rest of them aren't that bad. Like, here's the spikes here, but after that, you know, that was it. So, we should be able to find a warp point if we just kind of keep going this way instead. At least that's my general plan for here, is to get a warp point to the Cave of Serpents and uh, use that to get back instead of taking the, you know, other way around. And that there was also... well, okay, so we would actually have to get through the red area here. But there was some other stuff in the red area as well that we didn't... oh, actually there is a warp point here. So let me go ahead and take this. And I'll use that to, uh, find my way to the Cave of Serpents. And see if we can find that cave, or underwater area I was talking about before. Since now that we have the, um, relic that allows us to, uh, swim, it should be a lot easier to navigate. Because sadly, the trope, or the cliché of a lot of protagonists that don't have the ability to swim, uh, that they have to use, they can't, they don't learn how to swim. Like, look at this. There's no way you could get through here without swimming here, but you wouldn't normally be able to do this. But, this area isn't too bad. You know, thanks to our increased health and all that. But here we are in the Sunken Temple. Finally, a new area to explore. And more traps to worry about. But, you know, as you can see, we're not having too much trouble here, actually. Since we're definitely a lot stronger. Thanks to going through the uh, Windy Castle and the, all the other stuff, too. hoping to not get hit by that, but oh well. As, you know, as we can see here, we're not having too much trouble with the enemies here. And I actually really like this music here. I can, I, like, I could see this, or hear this in an underwater area, but it still sounds epic. Let's see, so what can we find here? Like, I'm hoping to find another save point or something close by. Okay. I 
think I need to do something here, but I'm not sure what yet. So I'll just have to avoid it for now. And what's with this block here? It looks broken, but oh well. It, technically, a lot of the blocks look kind of weird. looks a lot like something from... I think it's from, like, Mario 2. Which, I played a little bit of that game, but I don't think I ever beat it. But, let me see if I can just take care of him here and see what he drops. And just more gold, I guess. And more water to watch out for. But, we at least found an entrance here. So hopefully it leads to a... Ah, darn it. So we're back here now. Oh well, I'll, I'll try going through the other path to see where that leads. Like... I think it wouldn't be too hard trying to get through that area again, but... You know, I'm still curious to kind of see... Like, because since I don't quite know which way I need to go... Uh, uh, that I'm curious to see kind of which path leads to what, because certain areas will are of course a lot shorter than others, and so it's kind of good to take care of those as soon as possible, so that you don't miss out on them. So that wasn't too bad here. Oh, and and here's it. As I, as I mentioned before, in one of the areas, there's that TMNT reference here. Like, you have to do your best to avoid them. But yeah, you pretty much need to just be careful and uh, move around when you can. Apparently not all spikes are real is kind of why those don't do anything, which at least they do try to give you hints and advice every now and then. But yeah, this at least is a little bit easier and you can actually see kind of where you need to move. So, but now we just found our first fish boss here, and I can't seem to hit him. without getting shocked here. Oh, I have to hit his mouth here when he has it open. Well, that's a bit frustrating. Well, actually, with how close we are to him in that case, uh, I think I'll go ahead and use our darkness weapon here, which should help. And then I could try using... Um, maybe Sea Shock would work pretty well here since it's shock and all. So it's not too bad, but hopefully the sword we picked up here should improve our chances. Oh, and actually Seesaw he here is perfect. does all the damage you want, and we don't have to hit his mouth. But we still have to be careful of spikes. Wait, do I have the... No, I don't have the shoe sock, do I? So I need to make sure I have that equipped before you uh, face off against the enemy here. And I guess I'll keep the dawn. Or actually, I'll let me go for executioner. This way I can stay back and kind of hit him from afar if I need to. So, a little bit of damage there, but I think I can still win this. Thanks to Sea Shock here. Kind of doing what we want.
Yeah, being able to kind of hit him when we don't have to hit his weak spot is such a lifesaver here. Like, I couldn't see doing this boss battle now without it. it. Just makes it so much easier, too. So it is nice every now and then when you actually find some sort of strategy or magic that can really help a boss battle. Because you can see this boss would have been hard enough as it is just trying to fight his uh, glowing weak spot in his mouth there that he only opens up every now and then. But, there goes the fish boss. And let's see what's back here. Oh, there's a button. We'll see what the button does. Okay, so it looks like we've kind of opened up something now, so I guess since this is a bit of a dead end, this probably helps us out in the long run. Since I was trying to go through that other area. But, you know, as, I, as you can see here, it probably helped that we went through here first. Just for that washing, r rushing water thing. But, that should be it for today. So join us next time as we explore the rest of the sunken temple. Until then, have fun gaming.